the City of Albuquerque Public Art Urban Enhancement Division and Department of Arts and Culture proudly present Take Another Look. Built on the foundation of two city ordinances, art in municipal places, and the Urban Enhancement Trust Fund, the Public Art Urban Enhancement Division provides funds to artists to create art for the public, as well as arts organizations for arts and cultural programming. Join us as we discuss everything related to funding artists in the public realm with host Joni Palmer. Hello, I'm Joni Palmer, and welcome back to Take Another Look at Albuquerque's Public Art. Today, I am in the studio with two guests, uh, and we are flipping the script today. Uh, we are talking about using technology to analyze public art in Albuquerque. So just a note, uh, this is the final episode of a three-part set about public arts and technology. In May, um, I talked with Sherry Brueggemann, the manager of the public art program, and Andrea Poli, artist and UNM faculty. Uh, we talked about what is Albuquerque's history with art and technology. In that episode, I spoke with Sherry and Andrea about the public art program's first art and technology laser light sculpture that was commissioned in 1986, as well as the ordinance changes that city council unanimously approved in 2022, which updated the definition of what the city can consider public art. So it now includes temporary and digital media art forms. Mm -hmm. In June, I was in Gallery One with Mark Leach, who is the director of the Department of Technology and Innovation at the City of Albuquerque, Dr. Brian Rashab, the lead instructor for the Internet of Things um, <clears throat> at CNM, and Cel Celestino Crowhill, who was a student of that class, the boot camp, as they call it. Uh, he's a sustainable designer and fabricator studying art and ecology. So if you miss those first two episodes, uh, you, can you can catch up by uh, going to cabq.gov backslash public art backslash podcast. So let me tell you about my two guests today. And one of them is a returning guest. So welcome back, Denicia. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So Denicia Manet Malone is the founder and principal planner from Rook. It's spelled R-O-K-H, but we pronounce it Rook. Mm -hmm. so that's so you can look it up and, and learn a little bit more about her and what she does. Uh, she's a return guest to the podcast. She joined us in the fall for episode three uh, to tell us about the public art census that she had just started working on. Uh, with the public art program staff. So she's here to catch us up on where they are at and what she's learned in the field. Yeah, tons. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, I bet. Um, but just in, in case um, you didn't catch us for episode three, I'm just going to give you a brief bio. Uh, Denicia is an arts and cultural ambassador and urban planner pursuing her PhD on the user experience of race. She is the founder, principal, and interaction designer with Rook, a multidisciplinary cultural equity research and design studio, which she founded in 2016. All right. Okay, now... We also have Mandolin Sanchez. Um, she's been behind the scenes for, for all of these episodes, so now we're bringing her up front. Mm -hmm. um, she is the Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Public Art Program. She studied art and art history at the University of New Mexico, where she completed her BA and her MA. Her work with the city focuses on educating artists, the public, and visitors about the public art uh, collection, about applying for opportunities, and also making resources uh, for public art accessible. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on this side of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Okay, well, um, let's start our conversation today. And, and did I say what we're calling this episode? I don't think I did. Um, using technology to analyze public art in Albuquerque. So I'm going to start with Mandolin. And since you, this is your first time on this side, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you've come to be in this position at the city of Albuquerque? Yeah, so it's been a little bit of a journey. So, um, you know, always was interested in art growing up, uh, visual art, making art, but also art, the stories that art tells, um, dance and choir and performing. Hmm. So I was always interested in that. And I went to UNM. And, you know, in 2019, I was like, I'm graduating soon. <laughs> and what the heck am I going to do? <laughs> um, and so I applied for the public art program. I didn't get it, um, which was okay. 
Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I kept working in management through the pandemic and everything in retail and customer service and doing some admin work for um, arts organizations and nonprofits. Mm. And then again in 2020, I think it was in 2021, I applied for the associate public art project coordinator position. And I got it. All right. This time. <laughs> and so I did a year in that role. Okay. And really just dived in making a handbook about the public art program and the processes of how do we make a contract? How do we mm. get people paid? How do we do invoices? Like putting that in. Um, and also our database, which we'll talk more yeah. about. Um, and so I just dived in and learned that. And then a new position, the education and outreach coordinator position came open. And I said, I miss talking to people a little bit more yeah. um, and being a little bit more front facing. So I applied for it, interviewed with a few other people. And here I am. Now. Oh, that's great. A year, a year or so into this position now. Okay. Yeah. Congrats. Right on. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. It's been a journey. And, and it's great that you learned about all the backstage stuff mm -hmm. in your first position. Yeah. And then what you do now, you can draw on all of that. And we'll be talking about some of that today. Yeah, definitely. All sure. right. Well, I'm going to... Um, uh, I'm going to start with a couple questions for you. So in the last two episodes, we've talked about art and technology from the perspective of arts and technology of the program, mm -hmm. right? Um, and some of the potential projects that will be on the rail trail and things like that. Um, so can you provide a brief explanation of what it means when we talk about data and technology to understand the collection and communities served. Yeah, definitely. It sounds really like, wait, what? <laughs> but it's basically having files, whether that be physical files or um, digital files of the information that we get about projects, right? What the artists say in their description of the project or what the call says, like what were we asking the mm. artists to respond to for the site, for the project? Um, and also the artist resumes and prior works as well. And uh, also maintenance instructions, right? Mm. How do we take care of these works after um, it's in the collection? And so it also lives as spreadsheet mm -hmm. and in databases, like I've mentioned. Um, and so it's really to help us understand the collection. So the, for the staff. Yeah, okay. for the staff on the back end. Um, We'll talk a little bit more. We want it to be more front facing also, but it's really on the back end for us to understand those things and see where is the art located. And if we move it like two dimensional works and sometimes 3D works outside, where did it get moved to? We need to track those locations. Right. Like where is the art in yeah. the city? Um, and also rotate it so that it stays fresh in the city buildings as well. You know, it's not the same art piece for. 40 plus years right. um, that people see because we're buying and commissioning new art as well. And so it's seeing that and seeing where are there gaps, you know, mm. who's not represented artist wise, themes, styles, mediums. Um, and yeah, just kind of really being able to analyze the collection overall. Okay. And then what about the, the other side? What about for the public? Yeah. How have you been using or is it are you in the midst of thinking about how you're going to flip that? Yes. So we're definitely a little bit in between. Mm -hmm. um, so predominantly our database that we've been using is TMS or the museum system. And <laughs> its name implies it's about it's really meant for museums, for galleries that are fixed one space. Um, so it's helpful for a public art collection in terms of gathering that information. It's not the most friendly in terms of having tons of locations and really moving them around mm. because especially like two dimensional works, they come in, they need to be framed. Maybe they need to be reframed or fixed up and then they need to be changed around the city locations. Right. So that one is much more internal for us. There is a back or a front facing that, the Albuquerque Museum uses, um, but they use that part. And so we're really looking at how can we use things like the Public Art Archive, mm -hmm. um, which is meant for public art collections right. to show where it is and use maps so that the public can see 
where artworks are throughout the city and can visit them and tour them. Mm -hmm. Um, But, and we have some of that. We have like a Google maps on our page. We have a Flickr account with those front facing right now, but they're not complete. And you know, it's kind of separated from one another. So how do we combine it? And really use the tools that are out there okay. and the technology that's out there. Right, to right. Share the collection mm-hmm. with the people it's for. Yeah, and and so is that. I'm I'm assuming that other pu- public art programs are in the same boat. Mm-hmm. That you know we we have a lot of data. What do, how do we share it with people and make it mm-hmm. digestible? Right, because it's a lot. Yeah. Right. Definitely. A lot of information. Yeah, definitely a lot of information, and you know, but people want to know the stories behind the artworks. You know, right. They're like, tell me more about it. So anytime, you know, we talk to people, they love it. And so having that accessible will still be an access point for people, but they can also access it themselves mm-hmm. from yeah. wherever they are. And that includes in Albuquerque as well as outside of Albuquerque. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Well, and that, that leads me to my next question. We talk about the collection mm-hmm. um, and, and the, the database that you have has been all of the "Quote unquote official mm-hmm. public art of the program." Yeah. Right. So, um, what led you all to this idea of um, bringing Denicia in to do the public art census here, enlarging the way we think about what our collection is and and kind of the the breadth and the depth of it? Yeah, definitely. So, in 2021, we did a hackathon. Um, our data quests where the Department of Innovation and Technology received a grant from the New Mexico Foundation for Open Government, or FOG, um, and partnered with the city's clerk off- clerk's office and public art to showcase open data and how it can be used creatively. Mm-hmm. And so at the time, about 80% of our data was on the open data platform. Um, but we uh, were really working on kind of crowdsourcing the rest of it. And information because you know we're missing 20 percent, but it was a big chunk of it yeah um and so kind of like pokemon go you know is a big thing right so, like how can we use this to you know get people to upload pictures and you know get, help us with that collection of it um it kind of fell short it was only like a week or two mm-hmm. um but what was really interesting was out of that like the public and computational experts who like live in data not exactly me all the time (laughs) you know they were really interested in like how can we use the data you have to map out interesting things around the city like the public art but also where is it located what does it buy what can Mm. you do when you're around public art right and so that was really interesting and also like how we could grow the collection exponentially over a couple years using that information um but another interesting thing is we learned that our data wasn't complete, right? And it Mm. was a little bit inaccurate or messy data. Okay. And so there was an importance of how do we clean this data and also add new projects and keep it very consistent Mm. so that we can use it, but also, you know, we can put it out on these public platforms for people to use. Right. Um, And so with that in mind, uh, we really worked hard to clean up the database and clean up like locations, like, the latitude and longitude were right. swapped. So, you know, oh. switching that back. <laughs> yeah. um, and our manager, Sherry Brookman, she attended a virtual presentation about um, the Marion County Public Art Census that Rook did. And immediately it's like, this is what we were working towards in 2021. But mm-hmm. we didn't have the technology. We didn't have the tools to do it. Right. Right. And so it made sense to bring Rook in to hire local artists and creatives and members of the public interested in art and getting to know their city to do the census here Mm -hmm. and to finish what we were kind of trying to do. (laughs) Right. So, um, well, actually, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll ask uh, Denicia this, <laughs> is, um, is to tell us a little bit more about the public art census. In, in a, do you have like a sound bite for what is City of Albuquerque's public art census, if somebody off, on the street asks you? Yeah, so the public art census is a very unique tool to understand the power of public art in anyone's community. Okay. Um, so we're very fortunate and excited to be almost done with the Albuquerque, uh, Bernalillo County mm-hmm. census. Um, grateful to have done one in Marion County, Indianapolis, looking forward to doing a couple more. I will not say names of cities just yet until they 
sign the contracts. Uh, <laughs> but that's it. It's, it's thinking about how do we talk about the impact and the power of public art in our communities. Public art is this thing that exists all around us, but it's fairly new. It's, it's a young sort of phenomena. Um, and there also are not a lot of studies that measure it. And so as a mm. social scientist, as a geographer, um, as an urban planner, those are things that I'm curious about. How is our environment affecting us? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm also a, an art lover and I love artists. And when you think about all of the resources that go into public art, to the manifestation of a singular piece, mm-hmm. we should have more information about what it's doing, how it got there, what it has the potential to do in the future. And those are just things that don't readily exist. Mm-hmm. Um, so the census was kind of born out of that. It's thinking about what is public art doing to us and what is public art doing in our neighborhood? Okay. And, and so the, the scope of your project in terms of geographically, mm-hmm. it's city of Albuquerque and all of Bernalillo County? Yes, uh, with some caveats. Okay. Um, so for the census that we're doing here, it's Bernalillo County. It's a it's a it's a joint effort between Albuquerque and Bernalillo departments of of art. Um, but our model tries to be as intentional as possible, recognizing you know human error and fallacy mm-hmm. in that. But our objective with that is to think about. What are sacred spaces? What are spaces that we need permission to be in? Mm. What are spaces that are simply off limits? And so while we have the county as an entire footprint, yeah. we also went into it understanding that Bernalillo, Albuquerque, is very different than Marion County. Um, here you all have land grant territories. Here you all have indigenous territories. Those aren't things that every other city encounters. And so mm we have been going through a process to get permission mm. to be in spaces that have different, uh, we'll just say governance structures, right? Yeah. So we have to go through that process. So yes, it's the countywide, but we're being very, very slow uh, to make sure that if it's not truly public space, right. that we have permission to be in that space. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the care part of it, right? Of yeah. the work. Yeah. Um, so what is it? So, um, and either one of you can respond to this or both of you, but not at once. Um, the timeline of the project. So we're talking, it started in 2022 in, st- in terms of the conversations. Yeah, that's about right. right. Okay. 2022, uh, I think we had probably nine months of conversations, seven mm-hmm. to nine months of conversations. Yeah. Um, and we started the actual on the ground project and canvassing in November. Mm -hmm. Okay, just this past November. Okay, November 2023 is when we landed and got to work. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, orientation with um, a cohort of canvassers, uh, rounds of conversation with the the team behind the scenes to make sure that we're asking the right questions. This is a model that forms itself and molds itself to the place, Mm -hmm. which is, I'm very, proud of my team for having developed something that is malleable in that way. Um, So yeah, about a, you know, two to three weeks of like on the ground conversations, um, a week of intense, (laughs) and I'm sure the canvassers will agree, intense orientation and training, and then we hit the ground running Mm -hmm. with the project as it is. So the canvassers, um, how did you find these people? yeah, and, and what kinds of what tools did they use out there in the in the in the field? Yeah, um, so I, this might be for for Mandolin, but again, with the the nine months of, of planning and ramping things up, um, we develop you know what what's the collateral that we need. So we had outreach flyers, mm-hmm. we had copy. Um, the city and the county pushed it out on all their networks. And I think if I'm not mistaken, we had over a hundred people submit interest mm-hmm. in wow. being a canvasser, yeah. which is beautiful. That's um, cool. Yeah, yeah, it was really wonderful. Uh, and then we have to go through a vetting process because mm-hmm. it is a it, it's a project where you you have to be committed, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Are you, what's that old saying? Are you the chicken or the egg? Um, <laughs> so you have to be committed. And we we figure that out dur- during orientation. Who shows up? Who stays for all of the orientation? Who passes the test? 
Mm -hmm. So we put in some benchmarks to make sure that people who go out to start canvassing are truly prepared and confident to gather the information that we need. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And and so how did they go about gather collecting data? Yeah, what was the... Uh... Yeah, the day, this is, I find it fun. You know, I, Amanda oh. just mentioned like Pokemon Go a second ago. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like that. So we have, a, we have a, um, an app that we have developed internally and it can go on any smartphone, any smart device. And canvassers use their smartphone to go out okay. um, and they collect data at the, at the site itself. So let's say you are the art piece. Um, I'm gonna take a picture of you yeah, <laughs> I'll take a picture of you. And then I'm going to enter information based on the questions that the app is asking me. Okay. Um, such questions like, uh, is there an artist name present? Is there a year present? What type of artwork are you? Where are you located? Those types of questions are the, the data that we gather. Mm -hmm. and that might seem boring on the surface, but it's all very rich metadata that we need yeah. on the back end. Mm -hmm. And it helps us paint a different picture, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. uh, about our city, about our community, about our county. Um, similar to what Manolin was saying earlier, you know, it allows us to think about, if I'm at the art site itself, what is the experience that I get to have around it? Right. Right? For us, at Rook, we like to say that, that public art is like air. It's an asset, an indicator, and a resource. And so in that mm -hmm. way, it is an experience. Right, what am right. I getting at the site? What is my experience? Mm -hmm. And when we look at public art like that, just if you, as you were to think about going to a, you know, a church, a, a gas station, um, when you move to a new city, my mother does this to me all the time. I'm, I'm an adult, you all. <laughs> my mother does this to me all the time because I move cities constantly for, for work and for research, but she always asks me the three questions, where's the library, where's the hospital, and where's the fire station? Mm -hmm. Because those are resources right for you know being safe so i look at art in the same way where are the great public art sites in yeah. my neighborhood mm -hmm. and that's how that's that's sort of the message that we're trying to put out there mm -hmm. so public art is like air okay so um yeah so what are some of the interesting things that you've learned some of the yeah some of the the lessons some of the challenges that you had to work through yes uh, in general or here? <laughs> Let's say here. <laughs> here. Yeah. Um, beautiful lessons immediately. We, I mean, we were not expecting to have over 100 people submit interest in doing this job. We had a team of folks who did it again in Marion County. Um, I think there were nine of us total canvassers who went around some 380 uh, you know, square miles for, for Marion County. But eight people. Nine people, including myself, so eight people, right? When we came here and we see just like the abundance of enthusiasm around yeah. this idea that's still very new, it's an emergent model. Um, that was, I mean, I still get chills thinking about that. Yeah. But as I've been here and as I, I, I moved here and, and started living here in November to be intimate with the project, and you see how people are with art here. Yeah. It's truly in the fabric of your community. Learning about the history of public art and how it has become ingrained in what you all do, I, I, I like rave about that constantly. So that's been mm. like an aha moment for yeah. us. Challenges. Challenge is, I'm using the word here not to say that it's been problematic. Mm -hmm. Challenge gives us more insight on how we can continue to make this a model that is malleable, that is care forward. We have that in all of our language that we are a care forward uh, research firm. And so the, the, the hurdle for us is that we like to collect data on a timeline. Mm -hmm. But when you're thinking about people, you have to go at the pace of people. Mm -hmm. And so for us, recognizing that Albuquerque and Bernalillo County are rich with these territories and communities where we have to, we have to have longer conversation. Right, right. That means we have to push back the, the due date mm -hmm. and think about how do we collect the data in a respectful way. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, not a challenge in terms of a problem, but a challenge in terms of, okay, how do we think about the structures that we can build into place to continue to make this um, sort of uh, 
how do we continue to build a structure that makes sense for all, right? Mm -hmm. Each time we go into a different neighborhood, we have to have a, a different pitch because it's a, it's a, it's a different place. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So that's been wonderful for us to grow into that understanding that we're going to continue to encounter that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so you're no longer collecting data. No. And now Officially. you're officially. So again, <laughs> again, right? We 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 have just gotten the okay from a couple of. Mm -hmm. uh, can I say I don't know? No, I, I, I will not know. say we've gotten okay, <laughs> verbal okays from a couple of the communities where we were asking for permission first. Okay. Um, so for those areas, we have not started. Okay. But for the again publicly approved areas, we are done collecting. Mm -hmm. So now, what is what is the analysis process? And so that's what you're in now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can that's, you say a little bit about that? I mean, sure, sure yeah. It's um, an interesting, as a social scientist, that's like one of my favorite. Yeah, we're like nerding out, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, the process has started. Our, our analyzers are hard at work. Um, we're meeting every other day to, to go over what we're finding. We had, at the end of our canvassing in April, we had a count of like 11,750 some odd works. To put that in context, Marion County had 3,090. Okay. Yes, giving some context. Yeah, there, yeah, right? That's yeah. Almost like almost three times the amount. So um, four times the amount that we're, that we're approaching. Now, that's not the official count. Mm -hmm. So part of our analysis is we have to go in and clean that data. Right. Um, we have to find duplicates. We have to find errors. Um, I suspect that that count is going to come down to about 10,500. It's not a... It's right? still a lot. It's still, still a lot. lot. Yeah, yeah. So, and then we run all of this other rich query. Mm -hmm. um, we get to understand things like the types of work that are most frequent across the county. Mm -hmm. uh, we get to understand the topology where someone would be most likely to encounter work. Mm -hmm. For instance, if I go to a park, am I more likely to encounter public art versus being in a commercial district? Mm -hmm. right, right, right. Yeah. Things that are helpful for people to know when they're trying to just plan their day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we are also running data on, you know, if there's a signature on site, then we can dive deeper and understand who the artist was and get their demography. And then that gives us questions about equity and we can understand, mm. uh, has there been, has there been a process of equity or a practice of equity in terms of who has the access to do work? Then right. we can layer on questions about funding mm -hmm. and equity and who right. has access to do work. Mm -hmm. We can layer on questions about uh, demography of neighborhood. If I, I'm, a, I'm a black woman, I live in a black neighborhood, do I have the same type of access to public art as mm -hmm. someone who might be a Latino or et cetera, right? So yeah, yeah. it's a lot of, like, for us, it's beautiful information. And it, again, gives us another layer to think about how our cities are functioning, mm -hmm, our communities mm -hmm. are functioning. Right. So we're hard at work at that right now. Yeah. And so when, um, so when will that end? And when do you think you'll be giving out results? And what does that look like? Yes. Uh, we suspect, our, our forecast is that we'll be done in July, mid-July, with like the first draft. So of course, we have to go back through. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, we, we've been making great headway so far. Um, mm -hmm. And then the public rollout is, is up to the partners, the mm -hmm. city and the county, and how they are, when and how they want to um, unveil all of the information. Mm -hmm. But we'll be done July. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. just around the corner. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's, and what we're finding is, is, is wonderful. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really excited to share uh, with you all. And, this is, uh, I keep going back to the canvassers because it couldn't have happened without the canvassers. Mm -hmm. Right. We had 20 on mm -hmm. and off mm -hmm. throughout the f four to five months of canvassing that we did here. Yeah. And Bernalillo County is like 1,160 square miles. Again, like right. four times brown. as Yeah, big I'm as trying <laughs> to imagine yeah. how this actually yeah. happened. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know. I just give credit where credit is due and just rounds of applause to the neighbors and friends that I've, that I've made here who helped with this process. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm excited to showcase what you all have to share with the world because I truly think that Albuquerque, Bernalillo County is like, it's an art epicenter and yeah. it should be known as such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so 
Yeah. How is, how are you all thinking about yeah. the release of mm -hmm. these stories? It's not just data. It's, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a new story, yeah, right? Definitely. And so we're thinking probably October in the okay. fall that we'll have like town hall series um, where people can come and ask questions about the census mm -hmm. because it's kind of a new idea, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What does it mean mm -hmm. to have a public art census yeah. and to gather these stories and the data about the public art? So we can answer yeah. questions for them, but also see their thoughts about the data and what it's telling us. Like, where are the public art deserts? Where are the gaps in our collection? what artists are doing work out there in their communities and their neighborhoods that we can fund and support and elevate mm. their work and add them to our collection as well. Um, so it'll be definitely eye-opening and mm -hmm. we're super excited for all of those meetings. So, yeah. you know, sign up for our newsletter and right. you know, check out the webpage and that's where we'll put like the dates and information okay. for joining. And hopefully we'll have a few different ones that people can attend. Um, because, you know, we want to share this information and see what people think about it and how we move forward. Right. Right. After right. the data yeah. and information and working with other city departments um, to like the D TI um, innovation and technology and also with planning to do maps mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. information so people can access this information right away yeah. as well. And the final report that we'll share yeah, publicly great. once we look through it and see what 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 did we learn yeah right yeah yeah it's always great mm -hmm. you know we one of the outcomes of this will be a, an interactive map mm -hmm. okay to, to share with the the city county and mm -hmm. they can you know do with that as as best fits but it's really eye-opening when you see all the dots on a map mm -hmm. yeah it's eye-opening right. when you start to see like the heat yeah. Where, where things are concentrated and where they aren't. Right. Um, Mandela mentioned public art deserts. It's also eye-opening to see where public art doesn't exist. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You know. Right. Because I think sometimes we we take it for granted. Oh, we think, oh yeah, you know, I, I pass by murals all the time. Mm -hmm. But, but some people don't some have people that. Some people don't. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And so I think, you know, that's what I'm super excited about is seeing like, where where do we go next? Yeah. Right. Like. It's just the beginning of the story, exactly. right? This is yeah. going to help us move in in potentially some new directions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. And I think, like Denicia said, to be able to compare with other counties, other cities of, you know, how does it compare? How can we learn from one another mm -hmm. and support public art programs across the country and yeah. internationally yeah. as well? Exactly. To further elevate this and have this as a resource for people. Well, this is this has been a great conversation, and and with all of these podcasts, we could go on for a long time. But you know, maybe we'll have a, you know you back again. Um, we probably will once we have the results. So, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. And to my listeners, um, I hope this set of episodes has helped you better understand a bit about arts, technology, and the Internet of Things here in Albuquerque. A few reminders: if you want to learn a little bit more about Denicia and her work, go to www.rokh.co. If you're interested in learning more about the precursor to Albuquerque's public art census, you can find uh, the Marion County Public Art Census Report on Rook's website. Just click on the public art census uh, tab, which I'm assuming that's going to start adding up mm -hmm. with some other places, <laughs> and I'm really excited to see where else you're going to be working. Um, you can also visit cabq.gov backslash public art backslash census to stay up to date on all of the things going on with the census. Um, so I hope you will join us for our next episode, which we think of as a bonus feature or an interlude um, that will be released in late July. Mm -hmm. um, in episode 13, I will be talking with Augustine Romero uh, and Vanessa Alvarado about the Gallery One exhibition, Interpretive Reflections. Mm -hmm. So thank you for listening. We hope that after you've listened to this podcast that you take another look at Albuquerque's public art. Thanks. Thanks for listening. To learn more about the Albuquerque Public Art Program, the Public Art Collection, opportunities for artists, and so much more, visit cabq.gov slash public art. To learn more about the Urban Enhancement Trust Fund, visit cabq.gov slash UETF. Tune in next time to take another look at the City of Albuquerque Public Art Urban Enhancement Division.